Hey, thanks so much for downloading the episode on the show today. We celebrate producer Dub's big birthday by talking about all of the other things that have turned 50 in 2019. This plus Star Wars Land discussions and our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Thank you so much. Shop livingclip.com. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie. Everyone! I have something to say! Paula. I hate men who love their wives. Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. It is episode 376. I don't know. You know what? I'm just so awkward when it comes to that part. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> do you want to not do it anymore? No. Are you kidding me? After 300 and something episodes, we just stop. We're just not going to do it anymore. We're just sick of it. We're sick of it. We've, re- we've reached our threshold. We're just done. 376. Mark it. Never again. You what? You think I have no sense of commitment? That I'm not loyal? <laughs> not loyal to this? Our little hobby? I will do it. You know why? Because we are sister to podcasts. God damn it. (laughs) Okay, so it is, we're we're dropping this on June 2nd, but producer Deb's birthday was yesterday, June 1st. As of this recording, as it drops, we will be in Disneyland. Not you, me and Daryl and I will be in Disneyland because he's turning 50. (gasps) And... He's half a half a century old. Half a no, century. A century 100? Yeah, okay. Yes, half a century. And I somehow was able to secure reservations for the new Disneyland Star Wars Land, which is this new, obviously, this whole new, it's kind of like a new, like, you know, there's Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. Now there's going to be a Star Wars Land. And I don't think it's called Star Wars Land, but that's what I've been calling it. because Where did they put it? Do you know? Yes. Do you know? Okay, so Fantasyland, where the Dumbo ride is and all that stuff. Yeah. If you walk, there's a, there's a path that you can walk along the back of it and you will dump into Frontierland, where Splash Mountain is and stuff like that. So it's kind of like you go to the left, maybe? You know where Tom Sawyer's Island is? Yeah, right I know where all that center. is. Okay, to the f- if you're standing in front and you're staring at it, like if you're standing in front of like the Pirates of the Caribbean and you're looking at that big lake, that's mm-hmm. Tom Sawyer Island. I think it's Pirates Island. Now, to the left, if you keep walk, 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 walk all the way to the end to the pond area, that's where Star Wars Land will be. Okay. Is That's the entrance. To have okay. it, they had to eliminate the smoking section, which I always liked walking by. Oh, that's why they said no more smoking. Yeah, that's the only smoking section in Disneyland. And I'd always walk by it on our way to Fantasyland because I know I'm really weird and Daryl doesn't get it. But I love the smell of the first drag of a cigarette. OK, you know what's funny? It smells so good to me. When Victor and I took the kids there, we both were smokers. Yeah. We would take turns like one of us would sit with the kids like at the park bench across the like it was almost by the uh, uh, workers like door opening yeah, way yes. across there. And one of us would smoke and then the other one of us <laughs> would go back. And yeah. that was the time where I was sitting there. And the couple across me started laughing at me. And I'm like, what are they laughing at? Because I felt a drop of rain like behind my sunglasses. Mm. And I realized there's that giant tree right in the smoking area. It was a bird that shit <gasps> on my behind my sunglasses. Oh, my God. My eye. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> they were laughing because they saw the bird shit on me. <gasps> oh my God, Paula. That is, right? oh my God. <laughs> that makes me want to throw up. That would have been my sign from the earth to stop smoking. I'm pretty sure that was my ugly and awkward moment uh, at the yeah, time. I would maybe it was that. something else. I don't know. Oh when you're God. in Disneyland, anything can happen. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so. Happy birthday to producer Dub, the big five zero. Happy 5-0. birthday! Yes, he's a big five zero, and he is not taking it. He's not taking it poorly. But as you and I have discussed in the past few weeks, there's been somewhat of a change in producer Dub. I think the the reality of turning fifty is hitting him in an unusual way. We talked about the excessive attention from other females. Oh, how did he take that uh, episode? By the way. <laughs> You know, he's been very attentive. (laughs) (laughs) 
I, I haven't received any gifts or anything, but he's been just a little more aware. Did he talk about when he heard it? Oh, he laughed. We laughed about oh, it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was. He was not offended at all. He knows. He knows us so well. He knows nothing's malice. You know, he knows oh, okay. it's just talking. Anyway, so he, his knee has started to make a noise when he walks, and it's oh. really like he's really obsessed with it right now. And he goes, the second I turn 50, I go, well, you're not 50 yet. He goes, yes, but I'm already there. And now my knee makes noise when I walk. And I said, well, go to the doctor. Does it hurt? And he goes, no, it doesn't hurt. And I'm like, so just then just let it make noise. Or maybe he should get like different shoes. Or... So he he's like, well, I looked it up. He Googled it. And I said, and what does Google have to tell you about your knee making noise? He said, well, there's some stretches I can do. And I said, well, by all means. Add them to your sciatica stretches. and Right? It's the whole leg. It's that whole leg. I'm like, go ahead and do your stuff, man. He will never do it. He'll never do it. He, I can't even get the man to take a vitamin. So we'll see. He'll just either deal with it or he'll, you know, eventually do a stretch. We'll see. Does it happen when he's wearing a particular pair of shoes or does it no. happen no matter what? He's just walking and he can hear it. Every, but like in the morning, I heard it the other day. I went, oh, and I go, is that your knee? He goes, yes. I went, okay, sorry. Mm. Do a stretch, dude. I don't know what to tell you. I wonder if it's just built up gas <clears throat> in the joints. I don't know. It's kind of, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like when you crack your knuckles, that's mm-hmm. what it sounds like. So I think a stretching would probably do it, especially if it doesn't hurt. I mean, God know? forbid, should he take like a calcium pill or something for healthy joints? You know, and he'll blame it on something like I started making him taking fish oil supplements. He'll go, well, you know, this only started after I did the fish oil supplements, you know, or something. Yeah. So who knows? Anyway, happy birthday, producer Dub. But I was curious what other things are turning 50 this year. Hmm. And there's some interesting ones. The first one I knew because when Daryl was born, his grandparents gave him, when he was a brand new baby, they gave him a record of the Apollo landing on the moon. Oh my God. No way. So he has an original album of the Apollo moon landing, the recording on a vinyl. It's it's his most one of his most prized possessions. That is so awesome. The first man landed on the moon July sixteenth, nineteen sixty nine. He correlates that with his birthday all the time, and I think that's really cool for him. That is so cool. Yeah. The second one I have here is Sesame Street debuted November tenth, nineteen sixty nine. Wow, that's so cool. Oscar the Grouch was orange, <laughs> but they changed it. Obviously, now he's green. But yeah, nineteen sixty nine. Huh. That was neat. And then on this one, and, and you know what? I know unless you were there, to me, it just seems like a big mess. But Woodstock happened August mm. 15th, 1969 in the Catskills, uh, considered one of the most defining music events in rock and roll history. But it looks gross. And the, the idea of going to it, I'm glad they canceled the one. They were doing a 50th anniversary Woodstock and it got canceled. Well, I mean, there's just some things you can't replicate, you know? I mean, it's... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You can't replicate it. November 15th, 1969, Wendy's, the fast food chain, became a thing. That's cool. We just had Wendy's for dinner last night. I have loved Wendy's fries. They're my fave. I get their uh, baked potato with uh-huh. uh, chili and cheese, and then I so pour it good. on the baked potato. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so... They have good baked potatoes. I agree. And their chili is amazing. Okay, in September of 1969, the Brady Bunch made its television debut. Oh, wow, mm-hmm. these are big deals. I know, a lot happened 50 years ago. What a time to be alive, right? Okay, and here's here's this one. Neil Diamond released Sweet Caroline, <gasps> which, which he later explained has been inspired by Caroline Kennedy in June of 1969. I knew you would like that one. That's why I put this one in That's there. That's amazing. I can't believe Sweet Caroline's 50 years old. Like, how old was Neil Diamond when he released that? 20? Well, I mean, I think Neil Diamond stopped Well, he's 80. Right? Doesn't he have a Parkinson's <gasps> now? Or no, uh, does Alzheimer's? he? Alzheimer's? Oh, God, Paula. That hurts my body. I didn't know that. That just makes me sad. It, it really upsets me when I hear things like that. Yes. Okay. And these are the celebrities that will be turning 50 this year. Mm-hmm. Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones. Really? Yes. He turns 50. Jennifer Aniston turns 50. No. Yes. She does. She turns, she looks amazing. She has put some fillers in, and she's starting to look a little full faced in some of her. I was going to say she must have had some work because there's no way she she looks even close to fifty. Well, no, you're right. She doesn't. But uh, 
she does she has said that she has put rustolin in her uh, around her eyes for like crow's feet and stuff okay so it kind of makes her look a little fuller but i don't think she's overdoing it but i you can start to tell if she keeps doing it like she's not gracefully aging anymore you can see kind of a little bit of a resistance to that like if she does it every six months or something right the only thing i will say about jennifer anderson that betrays her age is her voice her voice is starting oh. to get raspy and older sounding. There's well, nothing already, wrong with it. She was already kind of raspy. She was, so. but it's starting to get a bit deeper, and 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 that's fine. She's still, I mean, I would kill to look like her. She's amazing, and she's beautiful and funny. Paul Rudd is turning 50. No way. Yes, he is. God, he's so adorable. Is he not just the cutest I ever? would marry him like a million times over. And he's been married for like 20 years. Oh, God. He loves his wife. I know. I know. I hate that. I hate men who love their wives. <laughs> Makes me <laughs> How so dare angry. They? How dare they? No, it just means a good one's off the market. That's all. <sighs> how, how, do, how do these men exist and I just don't find them? You are not attracted to nice men. That's the problem. You don't like... You, you want some kind of edgy asshole. I'm over it. No, I'm over it. I don't want an arrogant asshole anymore. I will tell you, Paula, when I met Daryl, I liked him so much as a friend. We were friends for a long time, and I really enjoyed his company. We had a lot in common. We liked all the same things. But in my brain, I wasn't looking at him as a mate ever because right. he just wasn't the kind of guy. He didn't treat me like shit. And so, or ignore me. So I didn't think anything of it. And then when he suddenly became available, and then he suddenly was like, I want you to be with me. I said, oh, hmm, well, this would be a change because you're not at all like any of the other guys I've ever wanted. The rest of them have always cheated on me or treated me like shit or only wanted to see me at night. Right. And so suddenly I'm like, all right, I'll try it. And I swear to God, I remember the day I decided that I loved him. Mm -hmm. He had gone he had gone skiing with some friends or something and he left and I was like, oh, my God, I hate myself because I kind of miss him. It was yeah. kind of it was very weird. Then when he proposed, it was like, yeah, let's do this. And even on the day we got married, I thought, you know, what? I could leave right now and it just could be over. It'd just be done. And I didn't I didn't do it. And I'm super grateful, super grateful because I basically went against my urge to be with somebody who treated me like garbage yeah. And it worked out. And I think that's I think that's how guys like producer Dub or Paul Rudd or whoever we think is a really nice guy, I think that's how that happens. Especially yeah. for especially for women like us. We're so damaged. You I know, know, we really. had such shitty father figure that we don't r recognize a decent guy. And until you're kind of for, unless the decent guy's really persistent and says, "No, you do not deserve to be treated like garbage anymore." And then suddenly there they are and you go, "Okay, and then it's great. I think it will take uh, persistence and patience. Agreed. There's a lot of nice men out there. We just we just aren't really good at finding them. <laughs> they have to find us. I think they're going to have to find me. They do. And that, that's the thing is that they do. And they hopefully go, they'll recognize that I'm, you know, whacked as shit. They, <laughs> but the thing is, is that they... Like Daryl, uh, he's well. You know how nice he is. He thinks we're just. He thinks our family is so amazing, and he just loves. I don't know why. I don't either, but he just loves being around us. He recognizes probably what we recognize about our family, but yeah, you know. I think so. But he just he loves it. He kind of reminds me of uh, you know that movie, oh, the, the Greek one. What's the oh my big fat Greek my wedding. big fat Greek wedding. I've told him, because like when I met his family, they're all very, you know, they're very blended and, and loving and everything like that. But our family is loud and chaotic. We walk into a room and it's like a tornado has hit. It's crazy. It's a crazy right. thing. I think it's one of the reasons why we throw such good parties, to be honest with you. But Probably. It's always loud and boisterous. And very fun. loud. And in and, and our family, I remember therapists asked me once, they were like, when you guys are with your family, is it the loudest person gets to say what they want to say? And I'm like, well, yeah. Because eventually, I, I can't remember how many times I would say, everyone, I have something to say. <laughs> and they'd be like, and then everybody would go, fine, what? And then you say whatever. And it was never as important as it, the, the declaration to say it. But that's how our family is. Daryl loves it. He loves it. And the fact that I challenge him every single day is probably why he sticks around. Because he never knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Never. True. But he knows I'm here. He knows I'm not going anywhere. We're really good parents. You know, we're not assholes. 
So right. anyway, you're going to find your dub. I know you will. You're going to find your Paul Rudd. I know it. You just have to you just have to stop with the with the bad boys. Yeah. It's the only way. It's the only way. I will. Okay. And then Scooby-Doo turns 50 this year. <laughs> so, oh. So there okay. you have it. I never liked Scooby-Doo. Never. Uh, you know, I was not really into that show. Yeah, I would agree with I that. I hated it. I, I always thought it was dark. And I don't... I mean- just always felt bad for Velma. I always thought she was like <laughs> Allison. You know? She was a smart just one with like the bad haircut and I Left sunk out glasses. the glasses. Yeah. I know. I, just, I didn't like it. I didn't like that either. I'm with you. It made me feel sad. <laughs> there was this thing going on Twitter that said, what was your first cartoon crush? And I was thinking about it. Yeah, because kids, not all kids, but a lot of kids, you, you, you know, you see a cartoon and you go, oh, my God, they're so cute or whatever. Now, for my son, he was in love with Pocahontas. Oh, really? Disney's Pocahontas. Every time we played that video, he would get up. He was tiny. He would get up and he would kiss the TV because he loved her. He loved her so much. Yes. And it was the sweetest thing ever. Called her Coco Pontus. And he just (laughs) loved her so much. And I was trying to think, and I actually did have a cartoon crush. I was probably in third grade, and they would play, um, after school, they would play Speed Racer on TV Mm. at 3 o'clock. And, I mean, Speed Racer is super duper old, but they would play the cartoon. And so I had a massive crush on Racer X. Mm -hmm. Because Racer X, you never saw his, he was older, and you never, he was like, Never saw his face or anything, but he was where he would wear a black racing suit. He was the Stig. He was. The rumor is that Racer X was Speed Racer's brother. Oh. And so I always thought that was kind of sexy for a eight year old. <laughs> <laughs> it was just mysterious. I don't think I ever had a cartoon crush. Really? No, I don't even I- know. I, no, I'm there was to... too many real boys at school. Oh, I just you whore. <laughs> I was. I was a total whore. You had a lot of boyfriends. Oh, constantly. That's so cute. I was in love with somebody at it's school. It's cute, though. Trying to it's not real. force them to do things that their parents told them never to do. Oh, geez. That's true. What can I say? I had older sisters. I know. We were terrible. We were terrible <laughs> influence. God. It's amazing that we survived. I was telling somebody that the other day. I'm like, I can't believe I survived my 20s. My sister and I should have been dead three times over. The kind of the shit we got away with. I don't even know how we did it. Honestly, I know we didn't even have cell phones. We had nothing. We could have been raped and thrown in a barrel under somebody's house and nobody would ever find us. Even with a cell phone, I'm surprised I wasn't dead. I know. It's crazy how we got maybe, you know, maybe people weren't as evil yet. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, I think God took pity on us. We, you know, had already survived hell. He's just like, I can't let him die now. They've survived their childhood. The least I can do is let him get to adulthood. Throw him a bone. Right. No kidding. It's true. I had a I had a guy once. I, I, I don't remember what it was, but I had a guy once say, you don't even know those guys. What are you doing? <laughs> and this was at Just a bar. Just a complete stranger. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I actually ended up dating that guy for like a summer. But I go, what do you mean? He goes, they could be anybody. And I said, well, what do you suggest? He's like, let me buy you a beer. And I'm like, all right. And so then we ended up dating for like three months. Wow. It was funny. I know. It was so, so, so reckless. So reckless for for a young girl. That's awful. I know it's true. Oh, well. Like I was telling you, Daryl's birthday is the first, and so we'll be right now as this show drops, we'll be in Disneyland, going to Star Wars Land. Now, Star Wars Land is going to be just masses of people. I mean, you know, it's going to be insanely miserable. Well, when does it open? Well, it opens. I think it opens on the thirty first of May. Oh, so just, oh, so you guys are literally going to be there like the next day day after opening day. Yes. But the only reason that I'm willing to do this, because I'm not a fan of the crowd thing, is that it's reservation only for the first three weeks. So you have to have, Mm -hmm. you have to have a reservation to get into the the land. So there will uh, be a limited number of people going in there. It won't be a free for all. So that's the only reason I'm willing to do it. Because I told oh, them, so they capped how many people can actually go in at there. any given time. So when you go in, you have four hours to do whatever you want to do, and That's then at, at the end of your four hours, you get out. Well, there's only huh. there's only two rides there. There's only two. How will they know when your four hours is up? Well, the ri- you get a wristband, and my guess is that the wristband are they're color coded, and it also has the 
uh, time period that you're allowed in there, and they're being incredibly strict about it. Well, I'm sure there's people like walking Everyone. around, and if they see you know checking wristbands <clears throat> constantly, constantly and if they say your time is up, you got to get out, yeah, you out or something. So, w- with that being said, it's going to be crowded, but it's not going to be impossible, and so that's the only reason I'm I'm doing it because I could never go to Star Wars land. I'd be fine with it. But I love Daryl and he loves Star Wars. He's loved it since he was six years old. And to me, this is a a really cool thing for him. And so we're going. And I couldn't believe we got in and I'm so excited. So uh, Daryl and I are actually going to do a Star Wars land recap. And it's going to end up being a 15 minute special episode when we get back. And How exciting! Yeah, so our listeners can hear all about Daryl's excitement and, you know, my complaining. I won't be complaining too much. I told him, I said, hey, you know what's going to be really cool is there will probably be a lot of celebrities there because it's exclusive. It's yeah, not like... Really? Yeah, now I know there were some celebs that have already gone in, so there may not be any big wig celebs, but you never know. We might see a couple people, so... Well, supposedly when we were in Disneyland, the Jonas Brothers were there. But, oh, my I mean, God. We didn't we didn't see him. They all but... look the same to me. They don't look like any. They don't like if I saw George Clooney, I'd go, oh, that's George Clooney. If I saw a Jonas Brother, well, I'd have no about, idea. That's the thing about celebrities yeah. is when they're they're in real life, like in their they don't look like anything clothes yeah. and with a baseball hat on. They just look like people, you know, the only people that you really know are someone different is athletes. Athletes are so much yeah. bigger than you expect. Like, I've seen pictures, I'm like, oh, Buster Posey's so short, but he's not. He's like 6'2". He's not short, but well, everybody around him is huge. basketball players you can definitely identify. Sure. And um, football players. Now, like, outside of Disneyland, just in L.A., if you're going to, like, the typical celebrity hotspots, yes. the way you can identify them the best way is look for where the paparazzi is following a person. Of course. Of and course. then you'll look like, okay, that's someone famous. Who is it? And yeah, then, then you so can figure you it try out. and figure it out. What's really so. funny, though, too, is you and I have surmised, is that super big celebs, they weigh like 100 pounds. They're so tiny. Oh, my God. They're not, they're not big people. So you're like, oh, yeah, there's the, that starving person over there with the super tan face, that's got to be somebody. <laughs> so, yeah, when I saw Nicolette Sheridan, yeah. when I went to that one restaurant, she looked like a tree. I mean, she was just, I mean, she's tall, yeah. but she was so skinny. So thin, so thin. But I get it, you know, they got to, that's their, that's their brand is their body and face. So they have to do that, apparently. Anyway, so yeah, we'll do a little, we'll do a recap and I'm going to try, I really... I really want to see if I can get some video of Daryl walking in for the first time. Aww. Like I'm dying to see it. I know we love him so much. He's so good to us. And I'm just, I know, that'd be cute. I'm so happy for him that he's getting to do this. It's such a big deal. I mean, it kind of eases the pain of turning 50, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I would imagine it'd be tough turning 50. Cause I mean, Malia's graduating this year. Yeah. She'll be going off to college and yep. you know, that's the last one. I and- know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, his brother's got his own family now. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I just. It's a lot of change. I know when I turned 40, I started doing a lot of self-reflection. Yes. Because I wasn't happy. Well, I mean, he's happy, though. But I wasn't happy where I was. And I'm just like, OK, I'm definitely not going to get any younger. It's only going to get worse. And so I really have to start making some changes. Yeah. And so. And you are. It, yeah. And so I kind of had mm-hmm. to like think about like I I guess the only way to be happy in this life is to start being more selfish which sounds Mm -hmm. awful but you you have to be your own advocate I guess oh my god oh that is so true that is so true and that's just a very foreign concept for me well you know what I think it's a foreign concept to a lot of women especially women who are mothers it's weird to to take a selfish because we're so uh, we're so accustomed to putting our children first that to say okay now it's all about me it feels like you're being an asshole but you're not right because well, what, what good even, are you if what good are you if they're if you're just like a limp noodle like nothing you can't do anything well and especially coming from our childhood you mm-hmm. know we didn't have you know very selfless parents right so you know, we everything we did was basically, you know, to make them happy. So, yeah. you know, 
our ho- my whole life I've been trying to make everyone happy and so except and I, for yourself I was, and I was hoping in return at some point someone would make me happy but that's never happened well because so, you haven't focused on what makes you happy that's the thing you have to find what makes you happy and then you will find- and I remember asking mom that once upon a time I asked mom I said mom I'm like what do you do that makes you happy do you have any hobbies or things that mm-hmm. you like or anything and she says honestly she's like I don't know I've been so busy yeah raising children and working and everything she's like I don't know that I ever had time to develop hobbies it's true I mean that's not uncommon that is not yeah. an uncommon thought I think a lot of people are like that especially when you're getting to a point where there's gonna be big change and you just like think okay well what what now everybody's kind of moving on with their life and here I am trying to figure out what the hell I'm supposed to do yeah, I think it's a very common thought when people are going into a transitional phase of life, whether it's well, you're coming up to it, too. So. Yes, exactly. And, you know, this is my stupid thought. I thought, you know what, I'm going to take a year to figure out what I want to do. And I still want to do the podcast. Obviously, I'm not going anywhere. But I, you know, Daryl and I are still solid. But the, the day to day of getting a child to and fro getting them through to adulthood is over and so now it's like okay now what am I going to do I'm like I'm going to take a year figure out what the it's not a it's kind of like a sabbatical but I'm just kind of going to figure out what I want to do and of course the moment I said those things the moment those things uttered out of my face life handed me a bunch of stuff that isn't going to necessarily allow me to be fully parentless or like without the parenting responsibilities so we'll see (laughs) we'll see (laughs) But right. yes, 50 is a big number. And you know what? I'd rather be 50 than nothing. So that's kind of my attitude about aging at this point is True. is I would rather, you know, be 50 and have a couple of assholes go, God, she's old as fuck, than be dead. So, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. True story. True story. Anyway, I'm trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to tell you about before we get into our ugly and awkward moments of the week, but I don't. I did have I did have a weird dream yesterday. Oh, okay. I dreamt that I saw two cats and they were mirrors of each other. They were two identical cats. They were Persians. Mm-hmm. They were super cute, but they were staring at each other and then they both looked at me and I thought that's really weird. And so Mm -hmm. I looked it up and there's actually a dream. It says, if you see two identical cats in your dream, it means that you need to balance your own needs with the needs of others. Remember to take care of yourself and not always worry about others. Isn't that interesting? I know. And then I had a dream. Whenever I have water dreams, it's always about emotions. And everyone knows this. If you do any kind of dream interpretation, water signifies our emotions, as you know as well. Was the water coming over you? Yes. I had what, a big wall of water. What color was it? It was clear. It was wa- oh, okay. It was like blue. It was, yeah, it was not black. Um, uh-huh. And so it so said, to dream you were caught in a tidal wave represents an overwhelming emotional issue that demands your attention. You may have been keeping your feelings and negative emotions bottled up. On a positive note, the tidal wave symbolizes the clearing away of old habits. If you're carried away by the tidal wave, which I was, it means that you are ready to make a brand new start in a new place. Interesting. I don't know what that all that means, but I will tell you that my stepdaughter is coming next week, and that's probably... Oh, could be. But other than that, you know, the clearing away of emotions, coming to peace with things might be Malia graduating. You know, who knows? So we'll see about all of that. But I thought that was... Inter- the cat thing was really interesting to me. You know what? It's funny. You describe all these things that you're going to be doing this summer. It almost sounds like you'll be relieved when it's all over. <laughs> I know. You know, what's funny is we're going to funny because they're all fun stuff. It's all fun stuff. But, you know, we're going to Hawaii. I'm I could care less right now. Isn't that weird? It's like it's Hawaii. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be super fun. Everyone's like five more days or 10 more days or however many more days. And I'm like, I don't care. All I can think about is packing. (laughs) I just like I'm not I'm hoping when I get there, I can just kind of be like, okay, it's we're here and I can just not think about anything. But uh, until then, it's like, I can't even think that far ahead. You know, I can't even think about it. I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody on graduation. Like, I'm so excited about that day. I cannot wait for the after party. It's going to be so fun. 
I'm so excited to see Yeah, it no, it'll be good. Yeah. I hope everyone's be... able to make it. I hope so, too. I mean, everybody got their invitation, so we'll see. Did you get Yes, your... I got the invitation okay, with the Friday crossed out. And oh, my God. In. You got my awkward moment <laughs> <laughs> right there. I started laughing. God, it was so... You know what? Whatever. Who cares? Everyone knows. I was like, oh, look at that. She made a mistake. Shocking. You know, not. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, let's do our ugly and awkward moments of the week. I really don't know how to explain this. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's it's just become, I mean, it's getting better, but. What I've did you do? A, I've picked up a dirty little habit of Picking your nose? Porn. <laughs> oh, you've got a porn so, habit? Just a tiny one. Okay. I mean, I don't know why. And I think the reason is, is I have. I'm just really struggling to have an orgasm. <gasps> what? Like, Wait a minute. I know, right? It's not even the not even the silver bullets working? No. I I just Wow. I can't do it and I don't know why. I don't know if it's like a tired thing or if it's just a stress thing or I don't know what it is, but okay. I haven't been able to for like a week now. Okay. And it's really bothering me. Okay, well, so, at least it's not like month. It's like no, you're still, no, in the, no, no. you're still in the Samantha Jones level of orgasm frustration. Right, right, okay, right. Go ahead. So I've turned to that and I'm just like, OK, you know, there's got to be some, you know, things on here that, you know, and I don't go crazy. I don't, you know, you're just looking like to get something stirred up. Freak anal, you know, yeah. mouth, <laughs> butthole, anything, <laughs> well, you know, it's just yes. like I'm not into that. I got and you. And so the other night I was on the couch and everyone had gone to bed. So. I was just, you know, looking around and I was tired though. So I'm just like, oh, I got to go to bed soon. And so apparently I had already taken my medicine and everything. Apparently I fell asleep on the couch. Okay. And Victor had come in the living room because he said he heard something. <laughs> and he came in the living room and he saw me fall asleep on the couch with my computer open. And so he went to go close my computer and he saw that. All the porn <gasps> on my computer. Oh no! And he's just like, "What the hell?" <laughs> so oh my god! He, he shut it all your... down. Oh no! Ah. And then he closed it, and then he told me to go to bed. And so I don't remember any of this, oh like none god. of this. <laughs> and so he just told me like the day before yesterday, because oh he thought I remembered. And Why I'm like, you... "No, I'm like, I don't remember any of this." I'm thinking... like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, my God, Paula. That is so embarrassing. It was really embarrassing. Oh, so shoot. I'm just like, well, I'm like, don't act like you don't do it, too. I so. know. But still, it's kind of like masturbating. It's like it's none of your business. <laughs> I know. But it's just it is. So. Wow. Well, I mean, has anything worked out yet? <sighs> no. And, and maybe that's the thing is maybe I'm looking at too much. And like I'm like what used to work is not working anymore because like it's like i'm on overload so maybe i, I just need to like yeah like fast for well maybe week, and then <laughs> maybe if you think uh, about it the way a guy does where it's like it's just a release it's nothing you know it it it, it doesn't mean anything like dudes can can masturbate and it not have to have any kind of emotional attachment to anything you know girls you know we've got to we got to go in the file and come up with some kind of storyline and well that's <laughs> fantasy, how it is you know, you know that's what i mean i need to think of something or see something I know. or you know, like come up with something. Guys can just sit there and rub one out without thinking of anything. How do they do that? They just glaze, and you know that that glazed over face that they get. Ugh. I mean, I guess they do think of something. Well, but... I don't know. I mean, they think about how feel how good it feels. I mean, I don't really know. Obviously, we don't know because we're not I mean, men. But obviously, you've heard comedians joke about having a file. You know, he's like, yeah. okay, uh, it was a uh, Ray Romano. He's like, <laughs> okay, girl on the subway, beat everybody else. And he's just like, like are you bisexual? No. Well, you, you are, are now. now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's true. That is true. You know, men are men are so gross. But anyway. But I envy their ability to, you know, rub one rub out, one out to, the, to some rando you saw on the bus. Sure. I mean, that doesn't do it for me. No, so. I have to create a whole scene. And you know what else is funny? Everyone thinks I'm weird because when I do it, I don't think of myself. Oh, well, that's just because you're a pleaser. 
Do you think of yourself? What do you mean think of myself? I don't even know what that means. Like when you're fantasizing. Like I'm the center of the fantasy? Yes. Um, it varies sometimes. I'm never in the fantasy. Oh, you're like watching. If I'm in the fantasy, then it instantly turns into like I'm trying to tickle myself. I see. Um, no, I, I guess I'm in them. No, I'm never. So you're more if like... If I the, do, it'll ruin it. You're like the director. <laughs> I don't know what I am, but yeah, probably. <laughs> that's weird that porn doesn't do it for you then, because that's kind of what it is, is voyeurism. Well, and that's usually what I look at. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, God, that's so funny. Do you know how many people have sex in parks? No. Why? I don't know. I had sex on a public in a public beach once, and it was the most uncomfortable situation of my life. People I, do that, too. I hated it. It was awful. There's no give. Or in bathrooms. Gross. <laughs> I had sex in a dressing room once. I had sex in a bathroom once, but it was with, it was in my own house. It wasn't in some okay, random that's person. Different. That's no, what I mean. I'm talking about like public restrooms. That does not do it for me. I know that some people really get off on the whole almost getting caught thing. I know that's a thing. Yeah, it's like a taboo thing. Yeah, like, it's taboo. Know. I get it. I'm trying to think I if could. I've ever had any sex in any inappropriate places. I'm sure I have. I just can't think of anything right now. No, I can't the worst place, or not the worst place, the most taboo place was a dressing room at miller's outpost <laughs> or not miller's it wasn't miller's outpost then i think it was a uh, navy yeah. blue is that what it was used to be called oh or? yeah I, re- I know what you're saying oh anchor blue anchor blue yeah that's right yes that's so funny yeah i don't think i have i'm trying to think well i mean taboo in the sense that I, we parked our car in a church parking lot once and did it and got caught oh you did yeah yeah we were having sex and um Actually, we were, he was going down on me and this, <gasps> and one of the church members showed up and's like, this is highly inappropriate. This is a church of God. And we're like, oh my God. And we like, like, get out of here. Just get the hell out of here. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I was like, we didn't go to that church, but still. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it was really embarrassing. Really? He's just praying. Oh, I'm just she's praying at the church, at the altar. That's a new term for it. But anyway, oh, yeah. How funny. Okay, yes. so what's your ugly enough? Oh, one? yeah. Okay, so you know I have a fear of spiders. And yes. um, it's significant. I it, it comes and goes. Like, there have been times, like, when Daryl's traveling, and, and, and inadvertently, there will always be a spider in my bedroom when Daryl is out of town. Mm-hmm. So I always have to vacuum it or something. And so it's not like I'm paralyzed and I can't deal. It's just that if I don't have to, I won't. But when they come up on me, surprisingly, then I'm terrified. Because right. I wasn't expecting it. So we were on our way to the store yesterday in Daryl's new truck, of course. Mm. We were just talking and my window was down because it was kind of a cool, breezy day. So the window mm-hmm. was like half down. And in my peripheral, I can see something, but I think it's like a gnat or a moth. Because you know those things get in your car and they just won't freaking escape. They just right. like refuse. They, just, they dance around the edge, but then they never like get out. So I right. turned to fling it out. And I turn and it is a spider hanging from a web flinging around in the breeze of the of the air by the window. It's like almost touching my arm. (laughs) I panicked so quickly that and I was wearing um, flip flops that I flung my body back to the backseat of the truck so quickly that my flip flops flung off. And Daryl was like, whoa, whoa. (laughs) And he like almost he started swerving. He's like, what's going on? What happened? (laughs) He was I was practically in his lap. And I'm like, I know there's a thing. I couldn't <laughs> even say it. I will. He's like, what? I go, it's a spider. And he's like, God damn it. He's like, it's not that big. I'm like, it's red and it's aggressive. And he's like, oh, my it's aggressive. God. So he leans over and he pinches it. He's like, there, it's gone. Are you satisfied? And I'm like, yes. Are you sure it's gone? I'm like, Ooh. And I was like, good Lord. It scared. It scared the shit out of me. He's like, don't do that. And I said, I didn't. I didn't know. I was just responding inappropriately. But whatever. It was terrifying. Ter- and it wasn't that little, by the way. It, if it had been tiny, I would have just like, you know, whatever. It was big. Well, if he could pinch it, Jamie, <laughs> it must not have been that big. It was big enough that, and it, and you know those ones where they're like the, that amber brown red and they're, they just look angry all the time? I don't really profile spiders. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> if you don't if they're there, that's enough. That's enough. There was a big hairy one that came out of the behind a, a picture on the wall the other day. <gasps> And I had a I had a mouthful of uh, zucchini and I almost choked. 
because I, and I walked by and I'm all, <laughs> I'm like, what's going on in our house? <laughs> He's like, it was a big one. And I'm like, yes, it I, was. God, I hate that. I, I hate know. that so bad. I slammed. I, you are definitely going to be that lady that gets in a car crash <laughs> if there's ever like a spider. If that, like if a spider crawled out of like your air conditioning. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> Oh, I don't know what you would do. I'd pull over and get out. In fact, I was screaming. I'm all pull over. And he's like, I'm pulled over. I'm all like, get it out. He's just like, there was Jesus one time Christ. I was driving home and I saw a snake on the side of a road. Oh my God. I like curled up into a ball and my foot like got off the gas. It was like, mm. yeah, slow down. Stop. And right I was on the, I was on the freeway. Oh my God. <laughs> and I called Victor. I'm like, there's a snake. <laughs> and he's just like okay he's like what do you want me to do i'm like i just he's like what exit are you on i'm like and it was the exit to get to our house he's like you're almost home it's okay I, you and know like, i can't drive <laughs> it's terrifying to see that stuff it's true it's so true i hate Thought it. it was horrible it is horrible and i'm like i think it was alive and oh he's like God. well it probably was it's nothing but field over there <laughs> I can't believe you like camping, considering the critters that are out and about in the, those areas. Well, you know, in theory, it sounds it. good. But I think once I got up there, I might like recant and be like, wow, you know what? This is this may not be a good idea. Because then you hear stories about, you know, snakes ending up in your sleeping bag uh, or in your cold shoe or something or uh. your boot. Yeah, I have no desire to. I mean, look, I've I've done enough camping in my life. I don't need to do it again. I don't need to do it again. I've even camped in my own backyard and I hated it. Even if they ha- like, maybe if they just had like a little camper, that would be better. <sighs> I don't know. There's just nothing about quote unquote roughing it that sounds appealing to me. Oh, we love it up here. It's like, well, enjoy. I will be here down here at the Embassy Suites. Well, that's why I'd prefer brunch. just to get like a cabin. I think I cabins cabin. would be fun. Oh, absolutely. Cabins are amazing because there's four walls and a roof. I love it. Right. And floors and, and toiletry. And usually fire. And, so, a, you, and know. A, you know, and a toilet that flushes where I don't have to dig a hole and put rocks on top. And for some reason, fire makes everything better. It really does. It's it's true. It's so true. That's why God. on Naked and Afraid, everybody wants to make a fire. It's the first thing. It's, They're like, we have to do it. I'm like, yes, because, you know, survival. Even though it's 108 degrees, you need a fire. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of do. It's really true. Anyway. Anyways, well, I think that's a wrap for this week. Uh, Father's Day is coming up, friends. And so if you want to pick up something for the old pops, visit uglytruth.com. Click on Amazon and surf around there to see if there's anything good for dad. If you click on Prime and you're a Prime member, then you can get it within two days, sometimes one day, depending on what you purchase. If you're not a Prime member, there's just an easy way to uh, get a membership. And I think it's $99. Or is it $129 now? I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know how much it is. I thought it was $99. Well, check it out, see what it is, but it's definitely worth your money. So you should sign up and do that. Uh, also visit our lipandclip.com site. Uh, fun stuff there uh, for dad, for mom, for the kids, for the whole family. Good time will be had by all. Yes. Other than that, have a fabulous rest of your week and we will talk to you on Wednesday. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.